Good evening, I'm Chris Mathis down in Washington. Let me start tonight with sex. We're really talking about gender, but here in politics, as in life, the contact point and the battle line is sex. Here's how it is and why it's important politically. Men and women have sex, only the woman can get pregnant. And therein lies the conflict. Okay, the potential conflict. Many women watching right now have a problem with men deciding on this matter. Many have a particular problem with the notion that men are often out there saying a woman has no right to deal with the consequences. Pregnancy is only the male's concern, it seems, when men are telling women they have to accept what comes along. They have to accept it because, again, men say so. And now this matter gets more heated with a U.S. congressman declaring that any woman who really doesn't want to have sex can't get pregnant, not even if, even if some guy has sex with her. Why would someone make such an argument seriously? Why? Because it's a way to deny women the, the option of an abortion, even if they're raped. Because if they're really raped, if there was a legitimate rape, they couldn't possibly get pregnant, according to this congressman. We're going to start with that one, because that's where we've been all week. Dee Dee Myers is, was press secretary of President Bill Clinton, and Mark McKinnon is a former Bush campaign advisor and now a contributor to the Daily Beast. Uh, Dee Dee, I never thought I'd start a show by saying this is really about sex, because it's really about that. Earlier today on the campaign trail, well, actually, in his plane, Paul Ryan answered questions about Todd Aiken and other similar stances on legislation in the past. Let's listen to him try to deal with this. I agree with Roy and Jack Danforth and the rest of the people from the Missouri delegation, current former, that you know he should have dropped out of the race, but he's not. He's going to run his campaign. We're going to run ours. You co-sponsored like the abortion-related legislation with Congressman Aiken. That bill passed, but I think, by 251 votes. It was bipartisan. Uh, I think at HR3 is what you're probably talking about. I think we had 251 votes, 16 Democrats. Um, I'm proud of my pro life record. I Mitt Romney's going to be the president. The president sets policy. Uh, his policy is exceptions for rape, incest, life of the mother. Uh, I'm comfortable with it because it's a good step in the right direction. I don't know about that guy. Anyway, last night, an interview with Pittsburgh station KDK, which, by the way, was the first radio station. Paul Ryan was questioned about his role in legislation, including the term forcible rape. That was a phrase that came out of his mouth, Ryan. He invented that one. A term NBC's Kelly O'Donnell reports Ryan himself proposed for an amendment back in 2009 and supported again the next year. Let's watch him deal with this one. You sponsored legislation that has the language forcible rape. What is forcible rape? Rape as is rape. To? It's rape is rape. Period. End of story. Uh, so that forcible rape language meant nothing to you at the time. Rape is rape, and there's no splitting hairs over rape. These guys, Didi, are on talking points now. They have been they have been uh, gagged. They can't think what they uh, say what they think. Right. He, that guy talking right there, was the guy that came up with the phrase back in 2009 with an amendment to a Ways and Means bill. It was beaten. He used it again in 2010, 2011. His phrase, and now he's saying it doesn't mean anything. Right. Rape Why do you bring it up? Why is he playing this game of working the edges of abortion rights? You know what he's doing. Limiting, 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 and now he's denying that's the game he's playing. Right. During his years in the House, he sponsored, co-sponsored, 36 different provisions to restrict access to abortion, including, as you point out, introducing this concept that you could, that, that there were different variations of rape, some more serious where the federal government might pay for abortion through Medicaid or another program, others where, no, you wouldn't. And, and who knew? that there were different variations of rape. Rape is rape. Now, Paul Ryan seems to have discovered that way, today. Was, even to give the guy all the credit in the world for mental ability, could he have been talking about statutory, which has to do with ages? Well, even the, in that case, I right. wonder why you'd make the exception. Exactly, because if a 13-year-old is the victim of incest from a, a which or doesn't. Or just a boyfriend. Uh, yeah, exactly. Or, or even if it's somewhat consensual, that, that that's what they're trying to get away from, is any kind of consensual. But what they're trying to do is say, only rape that's a, basically a gum point counts. Yeah. As rape and that women are responsible for uh, anything else that happens to them and it's it's I mean now you know that the truth is is that uh, Todd Aiken didn't misspeak he actually said what he believed and that's what's ignited this controversy and by the and way the Republican all these other Committee. Republicans who believe the same yeah, thing. I want to get to the expert on this Mark McKinnon who's worked with Republicans here the Republican National Committee voted on their platform language just yesterday regarding abortion it did not make any exceptions for rape or incest in line with what they did back in 2004 2008 no more exceptions it reads quote faithful to the self-evident truths enshrined in the Declaration of Independence, 
We assert the sanctity of human life and affirm that the unborn child has a fundamental individual right to life which cannot be infringed. We support a human life amendment to the Constitution and endorse legislation to make clear that the 14th Amendment's protections apply to unborn children. Mark McKinnon, this is exactly in line with the personhood approach because that 14th Amendment says no person shall be denied life, liberty, the other uh, full, uh, uh, full access to the law and equal uh, protection of the laws. Uh, why are they going into the personhood stuff in this platform that's going to be ratified Monday? Why are they getting into this in the midst of all this trouble? Well, Chris, as you know, the platforms are usually a nod to sort of the ideological components of the party on either side. And traditionally, these things are, are generally sort of written in and then quickly ignored because the leadership or the nominee often takes a different position, as is the case this time. The problem with the Aiken situation is the incident itself, but compounding the problem in a really big way is the timing, because look what we're talking about. We were, we were all talking about Paul Ryan and his big ideas and elevating the conversation, and look what we're talking about right now, going into the Republican convention at a time when Republicans wanted to send a message of tolerance, inclusion, big tent, and here we are talking about issues that have a lot of women running for the exits. You know, they're really getting into defining the rights of the unborn child, the, the, the fetus, if you will, whatever term you use, they're all appropriate, I suppose, but depending on your point of view and your philosophy. But here they are going into tremendous detail about the various rights that should go to the unborn child, if you right, will. Right. And they're talking about the 14th Amendment rights, all the right. rights to a person. Right. And then you have Paul Ryan saying forcible rape because he doesn't want to have any exceptions to the, the abortion law. And then this personhood amendment. Right. Why are they pushing so hard? You're a student of politics. Why would the right say it's not simply enough that the Hyde Amendment says no money goes for abortions except for rape and incest. Uh, that, and, and why are they trying to, sh well, is this just part of that general push to shorten and limit the possibility of any kind of abortion in this country? Yeah, but that's become the ideological center of the Republican Party. And one of the reasons this is such an explosive issue now is that it's been, ex you know, they, the, the, the Repu Repu Republicans didn't want to talk about social issues. They want to talk about economic issues. They forced the conversation back onto these issues. This is what the party believes. In that uh, human rights, human life amendment that's part of their platform. There, there are no exceptions, not for the life of the mother, not for rape, not for incest. There is no exception to that. And that's also true in the personhood amendment, which Paul Ryan co-sponsored, which would say, not only would it outlaw all abortion under any circumstances, it would outlaw many forms of birth control and in vitro I fertilization. Right. So um, those are not positions that the Republican Party wants to talk about now. Okay. And it's also not a fringe position within the party anymore, Chris. That's what I think. I know, that's is, interesting. By the way, we're going to get to the polling on this. It's become a very mainstream yeah. party. It's a center of gravity. It's where the energy the Republican Party is today. But absolute pro-life. Absolute under all okay. circumstances. This morning on the Today Show, Matt Lauer questioned Todd Aiken, the man at the heart of this controversy, about his use of the word legitimate, as in legitimate rape. Let's watch. Legitimate does not uh, should not be in the context of rape at all. That's completely wrong. And what I understood that uh, I had been offensive to people and that uh, I had misspoken uh, then I first off apologize. There is no rape that is legitimate. It's a heinous crime, one of the most serious, and I understand that the victims are harmed for a long time, and I take that very seriously. But uh, while I apologize for the misuse of that word, at the same time I don't apologize for the fact that I am strong uh, in my belief of pro-life. He is really talking down to the person watching this show and anybody watching that tape, Mark McKinnon, he is talking down. His use of the term legitimate meant there are only certain legitimate ca uh, events that can cat be categorized as rape. There are others that can't quite. He never said there was such thing as legitimate rape. Here he is denying something he never meant to say as some sort of apology, which is just bogus. Anyway, Matt Lauer also asked Aiken if he believed women were lying about their race, which I think is what he was saying. Let's take a look at the, his answer to Matt. Do you believe that many women, and I don't mean just a few, but many women, lie about being raped to gain access to abortions? Well, no, I don't believe that that's the case. And, um, and that was, uh, as I said, the, uh, the comments were uh, misspoken there, particularly on the, the, the word uh, legitimate. Uh, I don't think that's the case. 
Uh, let me go back to Mark. That's a complete contradiction to what he said the other day when he talked about the uh, the Roe case and how he thought, he said there is an example of somebody saying rape when there wasn't rape. Uh, it's exactly what he's denying, what he said before. He wasn't apologizing for what he said. He's not even admitting what he said. Go ahead, your thoughts, yeah, Mark. Well, nor did he apologize for the warped notions of his physiology and biology of women. What, what bothers a lot of people like me in the party is that we could nominate a guy like this in the first place. I mean, how do we get well, this what about guy? Ryan? What about Ryan? Is he any different than this guy except in his uh, charm, perhaps? He's a little more charming guy. Uh, the, you heard him on the plane right there. He was double talking about what he himself had introduced, the language of forcible rape. Yeah, it, it, it's unclear uh, from that answer exactly what, what he had in mind, whether it was uh, related to consensual sex as he was talking about. I don't know. I'm sure like a clearer answer, and it's problematic. As I said, we're talking about Paul Ryan and his abortion record now rather than his economic and his tax plan, so that in itself is a problem. And it's important to note that he said that 252 or whatever number of members voted for H.R. 3. That was only after the forcible rape language was dropped. Good uh, point. Good homework. So he, he's trying. I didn't to have know it that. Both Thank ways. you, because I was looking at the notes today. Let's take a look. I was listening to what he said. Got confused by that. Last night on Fox Television, Sarah Palin called for Aiken to get out of the race. Now there's a standard, and floated the idea. Well, she's a wild one. Talk about going rogue. She wants a third-party candidate to emerge in Missouri to go against Claire McCaskill, the incumbent Democrat, and this guy. Um, uh, let's take a look at this thought process of Sarah Palin's. What he's doing right now, Greta, bless his heart, he's inviting himself back in to uh, th this uh, general election that's coming up, and he's gonna get defeated, and that's unfortunate. That is why we have to think pragmatically about this, and we have to think, well, what's another option? Is a third party another option? If it is, let's go. The status quo has got to go. I love that backdrop. You know, I've never seen it. I went up in Nantucket, but nothing like that. That's, that's really an interesting backdrop in Alaska. Let me ask you, what, what's she talking about? She's basically... I have no idea. Trash can the guy. <laughs> yeah. He's gone. Right. That's right, the news. Right. But then but to say you can win a third person, but well, winning third party is always very hard. Right, right, right. Well, so the, the, they want him out, um, and he's not going. And they're okay. stuck. What's this do, Mark? You're an expert at, at imagery and the way things develop on television, especially. What happens if we go in? We'll have a thunderstorm down there, maybe a, what, a, a hurricane, yeah. uh, <laughs> Isaac coming into town. Uh, everything but frogs, I guess, are coming to the Republican convention. But what happens if this is the story percolating all through Monday morning, right? into the heart of the convention, this issue well, of this guy. Of course, that's why it's problematic, Chris, and that's why I think that we've, in part, why we've seen such a quick and broad consensus among Repar Republican leadership and grassroots people from Hannity to Rush. I mean, everybody's condemning it across the board. They want this off the table before Monday so they can get onto issues that uh, they don't have a broader appeal to the general electorate. Well, I think he stays in. I think he's very much theocratic. He's I hope driven he by stays his religion. In. Yeah. And I think there's nobody there's a higher authority to him than the higher authority. That's who he's listening to. And I don't think these jokers in the so called Republican establishment They've never have been the slightest him. influence on and this guy. And he's won in spite of that. So he, he believes that. He beat him he once, is. he'll beat him again. Exactly. We'll see and what happens. Enjoy to the world. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Didi Myers, well, and thank you, Mark McKinnon.